Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So that's the system today is from the user 9FQ in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending their system. And without further ado, let's get straight into this. So their system is called the Varunian system. It's actually in the uh, saves this time, I got the, uh, here it is, yep. So not a workshop one today because there was, I think there was an issue with the link or something. So I've got the actual hard file for it here, so let's see what we have got. Okay, hello. Right, ooh. Ooh, this isn't, ooh, that's, that's a bit strange. Okay, right, what do we got going on here then? So, ooh, very nicely laid out. Oh, it's actually running as well. Oh, props to him. Not often we get systems that run. Very nice. Very, very nice. Always nice to see a system that's actually running. Check that out. Okay, so, a blue main sequence star named Varuna, after the goddess of water due to its abundance of water worlds. This system can be played, but I recommend you don't play it for some of the stuff um, could happen. It'll ruin the orbit, so we'll pause it for now. So, I like how he's got them in bold text, different colours. That's pretty cool. So, in the planets, I've got the first one here. Icaria. Icaria? The first planet in the Varunian system. Temperature is often above 1,000 degrees Celsius. The planet is also really dense due to its proximity to the star. It has no moons. So there it is there. Okay. Next up we have got... Ocas... Oceamint? What should I say that? Um, a Mars-like world except for its temperature being hot instead of cold. This world's atmosphere is 100% sulfur dioxide. No mission has been planned due to its atmosphere. It's got two moons as well. Very, very close by. There they are, two asteroid moons, exactly like the Mars. Okay, next up we've got Tatib. Over here. There he is. It's a habitable world containing oceanic plankton and planet plants that appear to be more blue than green back on Earth. Its two moons can be used as staging grounds for more exploration. Tabib, a red asteroid orbiting closer Tabib in an elliptical orbit, is crazy, it's been 36,710 uh, uh, kilometers away. So there they are. I was getting confused with the different versions. There's a one and two, and then you got the original planet as well. Cool. Right. So we're already on to the outer planets now. So, this one here. Lane. 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 term. The dominant gas giant in the system, having one moon with its own sub moons. Okay. So we've got a uh, mumzoid here. It's got a sub moon, pretty cool. It's the only moon of uh, Laentis. While being a cold moon, its surface of gravity is an appealing place to live, being only 8.85 compared to Earth's 9.82. Laentis, Tum's magnetosphere, also protects it from solar radiation. And here it is here, the moon. Uh, Lipsis. Um, not as favourable than Munzoid due to live due to its common eclipses and its low surface of gravity, but temperature-wise, it is a lot hotter than Munzoid. Note: you can do, or you can do this after you've viewed the system, but if you land on the moon, you can see the eclipses. Uh, there's two that can happen: one where Munzoid eclipses the sun, and one where the gas giant does. Okay, interesting. So you could also have them both behind that. So let's actually we can do this while we're here. Oh my god, that's going way too quick. Slow it down a bit, because we are going very fast, and we need to try and catch it as it goes behind the gas giant, so... Let's try and do it, so roughly there. Oh, pa pause it perfectly. So, gas giant's obviously blocking you out, but if you do this, you can theory you could have the moon behind the planet, or the moon behind the moon, as it's behind the gas giant. So if we use this button here, if we do that, it's like a double eclipse. So you're getting eclipsed by the planet, or by the gas giant and the moon at the same time, and then this one's going behind him. That's pretty cool. So have a sort of a view here. So if we land, say, there, close this all down, look in the sky, that's pretty cool. <laughs> hey. So you can see a very faint light coming through, I'm guessing. Uh, if we just sort of manually fly the camera. So you've got our moon there, and you've got your gas giant there, both blocking out the light. Pretty cool. We uh, fly in ourselves. Get a cool view of it, so you can see they're both there. Both blocking out the light. It's weird how the light of the star does appear through the atmosphere, but not when you're actually above the planet. That's a weird visual sort of glitch, so that you can see there. Pretty strange stuff, but there you go. There's your, uh, there's your eclipse. Very nice. So moving on, we've got Verta.
Here it is there. A lonely water world. It barely has any land, but a breathable atmosphere. If we were to live here, we would have to live on the ice. Okay. Let's have a little look underneath. There you go. Yeah, very ocean heavy, isn't it? Alrighty, so, moving on. Next up, we've got Vernus. A hot Venus world. A hot Venus pretty far out from the star, then. Okay. Vernus. I like that, Vernus. A hot Venus-like world that is orbited by Hatomi, mostly covered in water. Okay. So, a small... So, we've got Verni. A small water moon orbiting that. Okay. Got lights on it as well. Um, which would light up its sky's life. Would not evolve similar due to this. Okay. A small water world orbiting a bright planet, which would light up its sky's life. Okay. So, a lot of reflection or heat glow on that then. Okay. Next, I've got Iris, which is there. A dwarf planet on elliptical orbit. Its atmosphere is a dense sulfuric one and it has two rings around it. It's unknown why its orbit takes so long and why it's so elliptical. Probably been bent out by those nearby planets, I'm guessing, if it's a smaller dwarf. See, it's been pretty bent. Right, moving on, we've got Nova Aquilia. Got a lot of moons around here, okay. It's an ice giant, but it is most interesting to the scientific community due to its many uh, spherical moons. It counts six moons. I like how he's organised this. You've got all the planet names on the right, and then the moons are like subcategories underneath the... We're in bold text. I like that. He's organised the text very, very nicely. Very, very good to navigate through. Because sometimes it's all... Some people just do it in one massive text. It's quite hard to keep a track of where you are. But this one is organised. So, you know, organisation. Ten out of ten. You know, I really like the way he's organised this. It's very, very nice. So, there you go. Cool. It's an icy moon with a liquid ocean beneath it. It is believed that life does exist on this world, but only enough to make oxygen. Next up, we've got uh, Blatius, which is this one. A yellowish green moon with no atmosphere at all. There is no life like could uh, life ever exist on the moon. No like could life ever existed, sorry. Um, next up, we've got Floden. A mud world... There could be life in the mud of this moon. We know there's atmosphere, but purely argon. Um, I skipped one as well. Per, per, Percival. Another unhabitable moon. It is a green and yellow moon with likely no atmosphere at all. Yeah, we did Froden. Next up, we got um, Malatoyon. Has a fixed sulfuric atmosphere. It is thought that not a lot of light makes it down to the surface. We also do not know what surface might look like. We are hoping it might contain life. Let's have a look ourselves. So no water, so I'm guessing maybe not with the life. And then lastly, we've got Avant over here. A green and blue world with no known atmosphere. It is believed to be quite beautiful, but devoid of life. There you go. Right, next up, we've got the Rutherford. So it's here. A grey dull world rich in nitrogen named Rutherford in honour of the discoverer of nitrogen, Daniel Rutherford. It's 3.1 times bigger than Earth and has one moon named Clyphe due to its massive asteroid crater. It has an orange and blue moon. So here is the Clyphe object. Cool. Next up we've got Olean Ari. An ice giant with one major moon, Oran. It is the second ice giant in the system and not of interest to the scientific community. Due to its distance and only one moon, and due to how small it is compared to its other gas neighbours. So there's Oran here. It's an ammonia world. It is purple and black with large ammonia deposits around its valleys. And the rest of the object are just asteroids. The rest of it. Thank you, Derbrav, Dabrav, for the name suggestions. There you go. Cool. So a little shout out to his friend there, I'm guessing. And then there's the other moons as well. So yeah, asteroid ones. There you go. Oh, so next up we've got Jupe. Uh, where are we? Jupe. Where's Jupe? Jupe. When the system was forming, Jupe managed to take more mass than Olean early, leading it to be bigger and having a captured moon. Where is Jupe? Barry Center, haha, -ha. it's probably there. There it is. There's Jupe. Um, and it's also got a moon as well. A bulletin. Bulletin. 
has a rich carbon dioxide atmosphere and on top of that tidal heating is heated to a temperature of 187 degrees celsius it is a massive moon being two times bigger than earth but devoid of life that, that extra molar mass keeps it in a barrier center with the parent pretty cool so now we're moving on to dry drive off it's a dwarf planet which was flung out of its stable orbit by uh, late this turn. It was a water world now covered in snow and ice. It has ash like clouds in a single asteroid moon named Tundra. There he is. Cool. Next up, we've got Felis. Over here. It's a blue and orange dwarf planet with an asteroid moon Dork. It is believed that it was flung out its orbit by Olin early. So there it is. There's this little moon as well. Looking pretty nice. Okay, next up we've got Beigia. Where is it? There it is, that yellow one there. A yellow and black dwarf planet with a methane atmosphere orbiting in, in the outer asteroid belt. So there it is. Okay, cool. Then we've got uh, Sakdar. Sakdar. Which is there. A purple pinkish dwarf planet with nothing interesting about it. And we've got Sisterly here. Okay. Nice. Uh, now we're moving on to Darkus, which is. Where is it? Can't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's hidden away. There you go. So, a small asteroid-like palace in our own system. So, pretty straightforward. Then we've got Tyrion. A large asteroid with a beautiful landscape, which is the purple one. Here it is. Okay, there you go. It does look pretty nice. Next up, we've got Kali. A blood-red asteroid named after Kali after a blood god back on Earth, which is here. There you go. Then we got a line, a line arc, a line arc, which is there. A dwarf planet with a hydrogen atmosphere and trace levels of oxygen. Its moon is named after John, um, named John after the person who discovered it, and it, its name is one of the god back on Earth. Okay, there's John. Okay, looking good. And then moving on to the final two, we got Ro Rognayek and. Cypher Oh, oh, hello. Oh, what did we zoom into here? I think we crashed into the barrier sensor, haven't we? I'm not sure. Have we? What did we crash into? Stuck. Can't move. Ah. Uh, two dwarf planets in the binary orbit orbiting around a barrier sensor. Yeah, I've crashed into the barrier sensors. Are glitchy. If you fly into them, you have a bit of trouble getting out. You do have a lot of trouble, can't you? There you go. Let's break out of there uh, and go back to them. There you go. Oh, don't get, don't zoom into barrier centers. They're very glitchy if you zoom into them. It's weird. There you go. There's the planet itself and the moon. There you are. Thank you, Neptune, and anyone else who downloaded the system for looking at it. It is the first public I made and took seriously. Thank you. Discord is 9FQ. So there you go. So massive thank you to them for sending their simulation. Very nice. I really like the organization of the uh, menu or the menu here. Yeah, or the text. It looks good. So there you go. And that is, oh, there's a hidden secret. What is this? There's no mention of that. What is that? Close that. Can't click on it very easy. Satellite, what is that? Oh, James Webb Cassini. Okay, okay. So we've got like a fleet of ships coming in here. Hey, <laughs> interesting. So there you go. They're heading towards the system. Very cool. But that does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of the system, 9FQ, for sending this simulation. And with that, we'll send down everyone. If you enjoyed the video, let's press that like button. Let's even go for 150 likes for today's video. And yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Helps us on a journey to 40,000 subscribers. And with that, we'll send down everyone. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.